A very good morning to all of you. Good morning. So it's around 10.30, so I think we should start. Yes, please go ahead. It is oh, already started. Okay. okay, thank you. So hello and good morning to all the participants over Zoom and YouTube. Uh, a very good afternoon to my Japanese delegates and friends. In India, it's around 10.30 a.m. in the morning. In Japan, I think it's around 2 p.m. in the afternoon. I am Dr. Pragya Bhatt, a researcher at Indian uh, at uh, Inter-University Accelerator Center, New Delhi. I am a member of uh, Indian National Young Academy of Sciences, and I am a coordinator for the Sakura Science Club for India. First of all, I thank you all for joining in on a Saturday. I welcome you all on behalf of Indian National Young Academy of Sciences, Delhi NCR chapter, to this webinar, which is organized in cooperation with Japan Science and Technology Agency and the Sakura Science Club of India. I'm happy to share with you that around 260 participants have registered for today's webinar. And out of this, around 50% are young members, that is, uh, which are less than 25 years of age. Mostly we have uh, college students, teachers, scientists, researchers, PhD students, and postdocs who have registered for this talk. And before starting this webinar, I would like to briefly introduce to you what is INYAS, that is Indian National Young Academy of Sciences. Uh, INYAS is the first and only recognized Young Scientist Academy of India. It was founded by Indian National Science Academy uh, Council in December 2014. Currently, we have around 100 members from all over India. The main aim of this agency is to promote science and education in India. And we organize various type of outreach activities in mostly the remote areas of India. We encourage the networking among young scientists. We support young scientists in their career independence. And uh, we uh, are engaged in the inter interdisciplinary and intergenerational scientific dialogues. Uh, we help people uh, in the field of science and technology uh, to get a boost in their careers in related to science capacity in the country. And also we collaborate with different science academies in India and all over the world. Today's webinar is a uh, unique in the sense that it is a joint activity by two scientific agencies from two different countries. That is Indian National Young Academy of Sciences and the Japan Science and Technology Agency, Japan. However, both are working towards the same goal. That is the globalization and popularization of science and technology. I hope today's activity will give a boost uh, to the young members that if they want to visit Japan, if they want to pursue their studies there, or if you, they want to collaborate with Japanese scientists and technicians and technologists there, I hope today's talk will be very beneficial for them. The topic of today's talk is the activities of Japanese science, Japan Science and Technology Agency in India and the Sakura Science Plan. It is the second webinar of the series on Sakura Science Plan. The aim of this webinar is to introduce to you the amazing opportunities available in Japan in science and technology for both students and senior researchers, teachers, and scientists. So I would like to briefly introduce today's speaker. It is my privilege to invite uh, Dr. Yuji Nishikawa, who is the advisor for international relations and cooperation, Japan Science and Technology Agency, Japan. So he graduated from the Department of Engineering, Hiroshima University. After that, he worked for around 20 years for a trade and investment company in the Department of Export, Public Relations, and Human Resource Development. He has also worked as a chief editor of a global trade and investment magazine called Monthly Global Business Management for around three years. In 2015, he joined Japan Science and Technology Agency to set up its India office. And I'm happy to inform to all of you that he has been in, in India, in New Delhi, as a GST representative for around three years. During his assignment in India, he vigorously promoted joint research projects and invitation programs in time in tie up with Department of Science and Technology Agency India and the Ministry of Human Resource and Development in India. So uh, I request Dr. Uh, Mr. Nishikawa to please upload his presentation. 
and uh, before he start his presentation i would request all the participant that if they have any questions please wait till the talk is over the talk is of around 30 minutes the zoom participants may write their name in the chat box after the talk and uh, i will call them one by one to ask the questions i request all the viewers on youtube to type their questions in the chat box in the youtube and we will be taking up all those questions after the talk is over so mr nishikawa over to you Okay, thank you very much for today for having me here, and I'm uh, also very happy to uh, for giving us a chance to to explain our activities and also our program invitation program. So I'll uh, show you our slides. And just a minute, from the beginning. Okay, so. <clears throat> uh, just as uh, uh, Pragyasan explained, uh, I was in India for about three years, uh, from 19, uh, 2015 to 2018. And during time that time, uh, I promoted, uh, uh, of course, uh, as JC promoted the joint research program and the uh, program called the Sagra Science Program. So I'll uh, talk about that uh, uh, from now on. <clears throat> so JST is a, a research funding agency. So to promote the uh, science and technology and innovation and as well as the human resource development in science and technology. <clears throat> and uh, this JST comes directly under the Ministry of uh, Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology, huge ministry. And then uh, under this ministry, there are three major uh, research funding agencies. JST plus JSPS, which I will explain later, also AMED. Uh, there are three major uh, research funding agencies in, in Japan. And, and uh, this is the size of JST. Uh, we have about annual uh, budget of about 1.2 billion US dollars for promoting our activities. And in two, I just explained, 2015, <coughs> I set up a India office in uh, New Delhi, South uh, Delhi. Uh, this is just the a, a signboard, and this is the University of Tokyo signboard. I'll like explain about this University of Tokyo later. And the uh, location is just uh, north of uh, the uh, Deer Park. I'm sure uh, those people who knows uh, who lives in India, I don't know, Delhi knows very well. It's very close to IIT. Delhi is here. And JNU is here at this side, and DST is just one block away. So it's a very, very convenient place. And what has JST been doing in India recently? That is uh, for the last about six years. <coughs> okay, I'll explain uh, one by one. Uh, during my time, uh, 2016, we started uh, uh, actually four joint research, but out of four, there are three projects which is named Collaboration Hub for International Research Program. Uh, this pro, uh, project is meant to establish a pro, uh, collaboration hub in, in India, <clears throat> uh, joint research uh, hub that is in India and Japan. And then uh, there are three projects, uh, uh, all related to uh, ICT, Information Communication Technologies, <laughs> like, uh, for example, Architecting Intelligent Dependable Cyber Physical System for uh, I, I, IoT and also data science-based farming it is also there, and also security in the internet. And so these uh, projects are uh, being taken care of by two, I mean, two, uh, one Japanese university and one Indian uh, counterpart. For example, this one, University of Tokyo, uh, together with IIT Bombay, this one with the University of Tokyo and IIT Hyderabad, and this one Kyushu University and IIT Delhi. So these three projects are now uh, being uh, going on, and uh, this will start, uh, finish today. This is a term; it's five years, and this will finish uh, uh, within this fiscal year. So another project is uh, uh, oh, sorry, uh, that project, uh, previous project. These three projects are being carried out 
together with Department of Science and Technology. <laughs> so Indian uh, universities or Indian scientists is funded by DST and Japanese researchers are funded by JST. <laughs> so this is a, a joint research project uh, between government to India and government to Japan. <laughs> So this one, uh, this project is uh, uh, being uh, managed by JST plus JICA. I'm sure you know JICA, Japan International Cooperation Agency. <clears throat> so uh, we uh, fund uh, together, this Japanese two organizations uh, join a fund and uh, support this program. This title uh, theme of this program is Smart City Development for Emerging Countries by multimodal transport system based on sensing network and data, big data analysis of uh, regional transport. So this program uh, is, uh, uh, in, a in, a, in a it is a uh, mitigation of traffic jam, and which contribute to the reduction of uh, carbon uh, CO2 you know, in, 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 in the end. And this project is taken care of by Nagoya Electric Works Company Limited. This is a, a largest, uh, traffic uh, signal company in Japan, and also together with Nihon University. And if, uh, as a counterpart, uh, we selected Indian IIT Hyderabad. So uh, these people are doing the research together. Uh, this also started in 2016 and the five-year program. So this program will also end uh, within this fiscal year. That is uh, March next year is the fiscal end of fiscal year 2021. <coughs> So we added uh, two more, uh, actually last year, uh, well, within this fiscal year, we added two projects called Accelerating Social De uh, Implementation for SDDs uh, of, you know. So uh, one is here, <clears throat> feasibility study for implementing non-burnt bricks to reduce environmental load and improve working environment in India, India brick manufacturing industry. <clears throat> So uh, this feasibility study is being uh, done, uh, carried out by Nagoya University and some other Nihon University and the Fujita company. And also uh, other like Kyoto University and uh, Kamei Seto company. Uh, and also uh, this is Japanese uh, uh, group. And then in, in India, where well, there's a uh, Indian uh, IIT Kampur is a counterpart, plus geo designs and research. These two parties are, are the main research members. And then another one of AXIS program is development and the demonstration of high performance rice breeding support for pipeline for semi arid, uh, <coughs> semi -arid area. So uh, this is uh, very close to the, uh, the project uh, of uh, the previous one, uh, uh, but this is being taken care of by, by uh, being carried out by University of Tokyo and the Indian counterpart is IIT Hyderabad, Indian Institute, IIT Bombay, and also PT Telangana State Agricultural University. This combination, uh, this program is being carried out. And then uh, also uh, in 2000, uh, 15, uh, just before we set up uh, uh, India office, uh, we started this Sakura science plan or Sakura science program uh, in for India as well. <clears throat> that means that this program itself started in 2014 with 13 countries, ASEAN countries plus China. And then uh, next year, India also was included. <clears throat> And this uh, Sakura science plan or Sakura science program is a short time invitation program to Japan for uh, science stream uh, younger uh, generation. <laughs> so uh, short time means uh, maximum three weeks, one week to three weeks uh, invitation program to Japan from uh, other countries, mainly from Asian countries. So that they get to know Japan and Japan, Japan's uh, uh, top science and technology, plus maybe they get to know some uh, Japanese people. Jap uh, they meet Japanese people and exchange with Japanese people, plus some get, they know some, uh, they get to know some Japanese culture as well. So uh, currently we uh, invite from 45 or well, 41 countries all over uh, Asia, plus uh, some countries from Latin American countries also there. 
So from almost all countries, uh, uh, Asian countries, uh, uh, eligible country now. Uh, so, <clears throat> and then this is the, uh, the result so far. <clears throat> so it started 2014 and uh, up to 2019, we already uh, uh, invited uh, over 33,000 people. <clears throat> And of course, uh, major uh, invitees number, largest number uh, from China, about 10,000 from China and Thailand and India, Indonesia, Vietnam, Malaysia, Taiwan, Myanmar, Korea, and so on. So total 33, over 33,000. <clears> and then from India, uh, it is uh, about 2,000, over 2,800 people have been invited uh, to Japan by uh, this program. <clears throat> so far. And uh, unfortunately, uh, in the fiscal year 2020, uh, due to COVID-19, there is no one uh, you know, who, who have visited Japan by this program, absolutely zero. So we hope uh, COVID-19 will, will finish uh, next, next fiscal year, that is April this year. <clears throat> Yeah, and this uh, Sakura Science uh, program uh, oh, sorry. is divided into three different programs. One is this account, the major program is the open application type, or we call it the call for proposal type. This one, uh, first we have to, uh, you know, a Japanese receiving organization in Japan, that is a uh, from starting from high schools, universities, research institutes, private companies, and other organizations, NGO, NPO, and also even the uh, local government or uh, government organization can be the receiving organization. And the duration of stay of the program is one week to maximum three weeks. And uh, these two, uh, Sakura Science High School program and also programs for supporters, these are uh, we call it direct invitation by JST. That means JST itself will become the receiving organization, uh, but this accounts for only 20% uh, of the total number of invitees. So well, I'll first explain about open application type. And the eligibility for this, uh, uh, for the invitees between uh, 15 years above or above 50 and uh, 40 years below. So uh, this, focus, this program focuses on uh, fairly younger generation. <laughs> and uh, aspiring, talented, highly motivated people in the field of science and technology. And of course, I uh, have to, to be able to speak English, but for Indian people, I think there is no problem. And then uh, another one important uh, thing I have to mention is those who have not stayed in Japan before. So those, uh, this, because this program is meant for the first visitor to Japan. So those people who don't know Japan at all. So uh, if, Already, those people who stayed in Japan, who lived in Japan, are uh, unfortunately not eligible to this program. And of course, uh, uh, selected uh, uh, this uh, the DBTs has to be selected by both select, uh, sending and receiving organization. And then, uh, yeah, as I just explained, uh, in the open application program. Uh, Japanese uh, high schools, colleges, university research institutes, you know, this organization can be the receiving uh, uh, host organization, not an individual. So, uh, and then the stay during, uh, during a duration is one to three weeks. <clears throat> so this is, this program is not an in, in, uh, individual to individual program, but this is a, a institution to institution or organization to organization program. <clears throat> So this is a process. First, the receiving organizations in Japan uh, submit proposal or application to uh, JST to us. <clears throat> and then uh, evaluation and selection committee is formed and uh, do the evaluation. And after that, awarding uh, what is meant uh, is done. The agreement between JST and the, the receiving organization is made uh, to, to proceed with this program. <clears throat> And then implementation start. Implementation means actual invitation. To be finished by each fiscal year. And then uh, fund releasing of the fund to the receiving organization is done uh, uh, by JST. <clears throat> and then after that, the uh, receiving organization 
uh, submit a uh, uh, report, uh, to activity report to JST. These are some of the uh, uh, examples. Uh, so uh, I think these are all Indian people. You know, they they visited. They are invited by the receiving party uh, and some in, uh, laboratories or manufacturers and also some Japanese universities. <coughs> and then, for example, in case of the University of Tokyo, uh, this is a recent program. Uh, uh, University of Tokyo invited 10 computer science students, uh, you know, uh, from IIT Delhi, Hyderabad, Kalagipur, Madras uh, in 2000, uh, no, 2019. <coughs> And so they uh, engaged in some short uh, research, joint research programs in uh, University of Tokyo. For example, University of Aizu. Uh, this Aizu University is a computer science uh, specialized university. They also invited people from uh, yeah, here. Uh, from and then uh, they, uh, this one from China and Taiwan. So uh, not from, not only uh, not India, but uh, from many other countries also. <clears throat> and in case, in case of University, Hiroshima University, for example, they invited 15 students from IIT Delhi, IIT Mumbai, uh, Bit Pirani, and uh, IIEST Singapore uh, for uh, one week. It, that is last year. <clears throat> so these are the university ranking of uh, Japanese university or receiving organization by in terms of the number of MBTs so, so far. Uh, uh, Miyazaki University is, uh, has received so as uh, largest number that is over 700, and Okayama University, Osaka University, Tokyo Metropolitan University, Shibabara Institute of Technology, Yushu Institute. You know these are the top 20. But uh, I should say almost all the all the uh, good universities, best universities in Japan, they have already applied and uh, awarded these programs. So uh, total number of uh, uh, receiving organizations is so many in Japan, but these are uh, top 20 uh, in, 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 in terms of uh, in this number. So uh, we have, uh, in addition to this uh, open uh, application program, we have this high school program as well. This one, in this case, Japan, JST itself, Japan Science and Technology Agency itself, uh, uh, becomes, uh, acts as the uh, receiving or our host. And uh, so far, <clears throat> starting from 2015, the first tie-up is DST. Uh, DST sent uh, 55 uh, students plus uh, some uh, uh, teachers uh, out of uh, Inspire. In, I hope you know Inspire Manak program. A top of all these uh, were invited. And then second year, MHRD joined, <clears throat> and MHRD sent the 60, and the DST also 60. Uh, uh, and in case with MHRD, they uh, selected the uh, students from central government school uh, in this uh, that year, that is KBS and so on. And the private school also uh, decide uh, were invited. And then, uh, uh, for example, you know, uh, it uh, number is gradually increasing every year. <clears throat> so uh, usually DST select about 60 and uh, MHRD uh, uh, to uh, 70 to 100 people from, and then uh, private school students, uh, maybe 60. Every year uh, up to 2019, uh, they visited Japan so far. Uh, so I'm sure this is uh, uh, Inspire Manak programs. So uh, each year top, uh, uh, you know, 60, a students are uh, awarded by the by after the national level. Uh, so the, out of these people, uh, those who are uh, eligible uh, age-wise, uh, they will be sent to Japan by DST. And the M MHRD select about 60 to 100 students from a central government school plus state government school all over India. So, so many uh, schools participate every year. And then uh, this uh, uh, private school, as far as private school is concerned, uh, JST plus uh, we, we tie up with the uh, Embassy of Japan or JICA, JETRO, and other government agencies, and we select the top uh, private schools, <coughs> and then uh, uh, they uh, will be sent to Japan. And just uh, you know, this is a unique case. This I'm sure you know, uh, Super Thirty is a very uh, famous, well-known uh, school. They uh, five students from them also uh, invited. I visited uh, uh, there, and then 
he's a, he's a leader, he's a Kumar, uh, <coughs> uh, he's a, a, a head of the uh, Sati, a super Sati. Then uh, these are the event, uh, some of the event. Uh, those people who visit Japan by the high, science high school program, usually uh, they meet at least one uh, Nobel laureate. He's a uh, Professor Shirakawa, a Nobel laureate in 2000 in chemistry. They had a joint uh, uh, experiment, a chemical experiment together. So this is a most valuable experience. And sometimes they meet our, our education minister. He's a minister at that time, uh, 2015, Shimomura minister. And uh, this is the embassy of Japan uh, in New Delhi. Uh, he's a, a, a minister at that time, Mr. Hase. We visited India. At that time, we, we invited some students living in uh, near New Delhi. To embassy, and we had a, a meeting, a, a small ceremony together. <coughs> I was uh, here. So, and also uh, for the uh, supporters or administrators program, we call it. Uh, we also invite uh, those people who may be uh, pro promoting the Sakura Science program together with JST. So, <coughs> at the first year, it was 2018 January. We invited total 33 researchers and administrators from DST, DBT, DSIR, MHRD, and METI, and ISRO. They, uh, these people are from all from India, and they visited Japan, and also they visited the top universities and research institutes, and also there are some cultural sites also. And second, uh, Sakura Science uh, Supporters Program was held uh, two, in 2019 January. In that time, 30 people. Uh, from uh, 15 I, top 15 IITs plus uh, four ISAs plus DST and MHRD. These people also we invited to Japan and uh, we showed them around and then they meet the Japanese. So uh, these people met, uh, uh, we had uh, uh, India here. We had the uh, first Japan, India Japan University Exchange uh, uh, meeting or program. And so they meet uh, many Japanese university people and uh, exchange their opinion for the future collaboration. And this one in uh, last year, 2015 January, we are lucky enough that time, you know, just uh, COVID-19 was starting, but it was uh, still okay. So that time we invited the total 25 people <coughs> from uh, uh, of course, DST plus you know, uh, some uh, universities, some other universities uh, like uh, IISC and NITs, other universities, you know, top universities from India. <coughs> so they visited uh, various places also, just like, and also they had a, a India Japan exchange uh, program also. We held the second exchange program in Japan. So that should be very useful for them and for Japanese universities as well. <laughs> And these are the universities uh, which were uh, invited uh, to 2020, uh, IISC, C, JNU, and five NITs plus, you know, all these, uh, I'm sure, you know, all these top universities from India were invited to Japan by this program. And then, uh, you know, after visiting Japan, uh, that's not the end of the story. We want uh, them to be stay connected and to join hands together and promote science and technology uh, all over the world. <coughs> so, well, for example, we had an alumni meeting start in, first one is held in Singapore, 2016 at the bottom here and going up, up, you know. And then uh, when I returned from India, 2018 uh, uh, March, then I also uh, together with uh, other members of GST, <coughs> we, had a, a second, uh, I don't know, first meeting in India, Embassy of uh, Japan in New Delhi, and then in Sri Lanka, Colombo, and Vietnam, Malaysia, and this Japan, in Japan also, because uh, <coughs> there are uh, hundreds of uh, people, uh, Sakura Science alumni members, uh, who returned to Japan for study and so on. So we uh, uh, gathered them and they had a, a Japan alumni meeting and then Indonesia and in second India alumni meeting. And then uh, this year, or I should say this fiscal year, uh, we actually cannot invite people. Uh, so we had the online meeting. The first online meeting was last July. 
uh, was by Indian alumni, uh, Indonesia alumni members. They gather online and had a meeting. And as some of the, as I'm sure, uh, Indian people also joined. And then second one was uh, November in November last year, uh, Thailand was uh, uh, alumni meeting was held online. And then uh, actually uh, on the March 6th, we are planning to have an online alumni meeting of Japan. So <laughs> I think it's already uh, on our website. So you can, I think you can also join. Uh, if not, uh, you are not an alumni member, maybe I'm sure you can join. So please uh, search for uh, Sakura Science Alumni uh, Meeting, Japan Alumni Meeting online. And this was the first Sakura Alumni Meeting. And this is the Embassy of Japan, uh, Ambassador's Official Residence. Uh, we had a meeting. And I'm sure, uh, I'm sure you know these people. He's he's a, a principal scientific officer to India, uh, Professor Vijay Raghavan. He was the um, chief guest uh, to this meeting, and the uh, ambassador is also there. And that time, we selected four uh, main coordinators of the alumni association, and then the main uh, main uh, chief coordinator is uh, Dr. Jitendra Chu. He's assistant professor of ISA Pune. He's uh, managing. He's running this. Uh, uh, organization. <clears throat> and then Dr. Pragya uh, uh, San, also a member of this uh, uh, alumni association. And this is the second one. Uh, we had a second alumni meeting for India at IIT Delhi uh, campus here. So uh, we had this, uh, this ambas ambassador of Japan also there. And we had a, a poster session also, also we held a poster session. And those are some of the related pro pro topics uh, I can uh, just introduce. <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, this uh, NITE deemed to be university. This university formed a Sakura Science Forum because uh, the, the, many uh, of the students uh, have been invited to Japan by this program. So uh, they formed this program uh, at, at within their own campus. <clears throat> and, and this one, uh, you know, or returnee uh, to Japan, uh, this last year, uh, she was invited to Japanese university. She, she was at that time a uh, uh, high school student, uh, I think uh, grade 12, uh, and then or uh, 10 or 12. Uh, and then uh, she uh, was in, attracted to Japan and she applied uh, for the entrance for the entrance examination for the University of Tokyo. So she was uh, uh, successfully in, in that uh, program. So now, Oh, she's uh, studying, uh, getting lecture online, and she's supposed to come to Japan on March uh, this year. This is a, a newspaper uh, report. <clears throat> and this one, uh, last year also, uh, you know, Minister, your Minister of Science and Technology, uh, Dr. Uh, <coughs> Ash Vardhan, he mentioned the Sakura program in his uh, 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 speech uh, uh, in the uh, Congress, uh, lower house. That is, you know, uh, DST is also, uh, you know, that to attract and motivate young student. You know, they, uh, they uh, DST, actually, DST is uh, close, uh, very much eagerly promoting Sakura Exchange program. So he was, she mentioned in his uh, uh, speech. And then, um, this program is highly uh, appreciated by both governments. And so, uh, all the time, whenever they meet each other, uh, the prime minister of each country meet each other, they, in the joint uh, statement, uh, Sakura Science is mentioned. <coughs> like this, you know. <coughs> so uh, now this program is, is recognized by both government as a very important program. <coughs> and then this year, I uh, know, I should say last year, November uh, 2020, uh, there was a, a regular meeting, a, a joint committee on science and technology between India and Japan is uh, held online last year. So uh, uh, in this meeting, SSP also highlighted by both governments. <coughs> and uh, we are very lucky to hear that uh, uh, Indian government is also, or I should say DST, Ministry of Science and Technology, are uh, also now planning to invite some students from, from Japan uh, as soon as uh, possible. So we are very happy to hear that from Indian side. And so the most important thing for this uh, uh, Sakura Science Program 
uh, if you want to uh, come to Japan by uh, this program, the sending organization, that is university or schools or research institute in Japan, uh, no, in India, should find a receiving or host organizations in Japan because only uh, host organizations in Japan can make application to JST. <coughs> So uh, uh, whoever wants to come to Japan must uh, tie up with Japanese uh, host uh, organizations. This is very important. And so <clears throat> uh, in connection with this program, we were just about to uh, touch upon some of the related uh, uh, item topics. That is study in Japan program is uh, uh, now, uh, maybe some people may be interested. <clears throat> how, how, and uh, why, how, when. <clears throat> so, uh, Ministry of Education, they appointed the University of Tokyo <coughs> to promote uh, this uh, program in Southeast Asia. So uh, that is why the University of Tokyo office, India office is uh, just together with JST India office. <coughs> we are running uh, uh, office together uh, because this is uh, our Ministry of Education is doing this uh, study in Japan promotion program. So you can easily check up on this uh, University of Tokyo India Office website. You, you can get uh, uh, many useful information if you are interested to come to study in Japan. So <clears throat> these are the uh, programs, online programs to, uh, uh, to uh, explain uh, how to come, when to come, you know. Uh, these programs are being carried out uh, even today, this evening, and then uh, maybe next week. So but this is uh, carried out uh, by University of Tokyo India office online. So you can check it up and uh, if you are interested to, to please join this program. <laughs> and the University of India office is uh, the same address, you know, Grand Floor uh, B2622, South Darden, Anclave, New Delhi. And then India office ADN, a GS mail, U University of Tokyo ACJP. This is the mail address. So you can also send whenever, whatever you have questions about study in Japan program, please send the email to this. This is one point. Second, uh, Japanese government, uh, minister, next is the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology. This ministry provides scholarship to, to uh, other countries. So we just, uh, for this, you check up on the website of Japanese embassy uh, website in India. It is easy, you can find. <clears throat> they show how to get and when to get uh, this uh, uh, scholarship. So these are uh, as a copy of the uh, uh, website of the embassy of Japan. Uh, for the research student, undergraduate student, college, uh, college of technology student, <coughs> And also, uh, for example, specialized trainee college students or Japanese, stu Japanese studies, study on Japan, you know, the student also, young leaders program also. These are the uh, programs uh, available uh, the, for the scholarship is available for these programs. So please check it up with the Embassy of Japan in India. So, or maybe you can also send email or maybe you can call up, uh, make a telephone call. But uh, this year, due to COVID-19, there are some problems uh, with this implementing this program, I mean, mixed uh, scholarship. And also JASO, <coughs> J-A-S-S-O, this is very also very important organization in Japan because uh, JASO provide also scholarship uh, program. So uh, also you can check it up in, in, uh, because they have an English uh, website <coughs> or even some other language, Chinese and uh, some many other languages. So uh, check up this scholarship program, whatever scholarship available. So this is a pamphlet uh, on the JASO pamphlet. JASO Japan, JASO means Japan Student Services Organization. This is uh, also government uh, organization. <coughs> so, so they uh, introduce uh, many uh, scholarship programs uh, online or uh, actually they have offices in some countries, but not in India. So uh, University of Tokyo is acting like uh, JASO in. India. Anyway, you can uh, find this uh, pamphlet online also. Please study if you are interested. And also, JSPC is very also important. You know, JSPC is the sister organization to JST, Japan Society for the Promotion of Science. They, ha they have a postdoctoral fellowship programs. 
So many uh, scientists uh, of, of India or some other countries uh, came to Japan uh, as postdoctoral fellowship uh, fellows. So this is also very important for for um, for the researchers, senior uh, young young researchers. So uh, this is a website of, of JSPS. And then this one is an important thing is the standard program to provide opportunities for postdoctoral researchers from other countries to conduct under, uh, under the guidelines of their host, a corporate, corporate, uh, cooperative research with leading research groups in universities and other Japanese institutes. So uh, please uh, Google the website for, for, for the uh, JSPS fellowship programs if you are interested. And then, so uh, maybe if people from India, maybe you may be uh, interested in knowing this <coughs> because uh, JSP is also alumni, big alumni organization, <coughs> association. India JSPS Alumni Association is already formed and is very actively uh, uh, moving, uh, doing uh, activities in Japan or in, in India as well. <coughs> so this is a website of uh, India, India JSPS Alumni. <coughs> So also you can, this is a, a online, so you can easily check it up on online. And then important, you know, uh, here at the top, Professor Sakti Kumar uh, of uh, Toyo University, he is a chairman or uh, president, I should say, of this alumni association. I know him very well, so, uh, you know, he's a very nice person. So if you are interested, uh, please uh, contact him or maybe some other people. All these are on, online, available online. And this is a uh, uh, India Japan uh, India JSP Alumni Association annual meeting. They every year they have a big alumni meeting in India. <laughs> so starting in 2010 at the bottom here in New Delhi and Trivandrum and you know, then going up and even uh, 2019 they had this uh, in New Delhi. <laughs> and uh, also I also joined from 2015, 16, 17. Uh, I, I joined uh, this uh, alumni meeting. You know, this is very uh, interesting. So uh, you know, if you are interested also, please uh, try to contact and then uh, join <coughs> this meeting. And then uh, this is, a, for example, also in Japan, there are there is Indian Scientist Association in Japan, ISAJ. So <coughs> oh, this is a website. Uh, of them, and they and they hold annual meeting. You know, innovation in science and technology for new issues and challenges. Uh, they have this symposium almost every year. So, if you are interested, also please uh, uh, contact them. And then, <clears throat> these are the uh, for the 2020. Uh, these are the people who organized uh, this uh, symposium. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, this the Professor Sakti Kumar is also here, member of the advisory committee of this uh, alumni meeting. So uh, if you have uh, uh, a uh, scientist or engineer from India, maybe if you come to Japan, you are not alone. You already, there are many Indian scientists and uh, engineers are now uh, very actively working in Japan. So uh, please, uh, everything is available on website. So if we ever want to come to Japan, please, Japan always welcome you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Nishikawa, for this wonderful talk. I hope uh, students and researchers will have a number of questions. I can see a few questions here. So if uh, anybody has any question, you can type your name. I'll call you one by one. But I think few have uh, written down their question. So Mr. Nishikawa, should we take up the questions now? Yes, yes. Okay. Which one? You, you, maybe you can ask. Yes. So uh, Subhash has asked, that whether Sakura Science is a one-time program or somebody has already been to Japan via this program can apply for this program again. Ah, actually, this is just one-time program, you know, one time in your life. So uh, one, one, first, but uh, so if you come to Japan by this program, and if you if you like Japan, you can apply for so some other programs are also available, just just like a JSPS uh, fellowship programs. So you can try to find some other program and come to Japan, please. Yeah. 
okay so the other question is by hitesh bist he is msc medical physics student at iit kharagpur he asked which university should he choose as host universities of course uh, it depends on you or on your university or institute <clears throat> so uh, you have your your institute your university has to have a very good relationship with, with japanese uh, receiving host organization so uh, maybe if you are a student uh, you can uh, discuss with your, uh, you can contact your your professor a supervising professor uh, maybe uh, most of the uh, IITs or top universities in India, they have some connection with Japanese universities. So oh, please uh, uh, somehow find the best partner in Japan. Okay. So Deepanshu, are you there? You want to ask some question? Deepanshu Kalra. You can unmute yourself. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, hi, Uzaimasu. Uh, Nishikawa Sensei. Uh, actually, I wanted to ask you that: uh, Is there something in? Uh, is there something which JSC is offering to uh, non-science stream students also, or ah, not? Or is it a um, this kind of meditation like, program? You mean science-oriented? Ah, actually, uh, uh, the the one we so far, yes, so far, JST, you know, as it's the name shows, it is a science and technology promotion organization. So we focus on science and technology people, but uh, uh, there are uh, many requests coming from uh, people. So we are now thinking of uh, inviting people, non-science and technology people as well by Sakura Science Project, but it is not decided yet. So as soon as uh, this is decided, uh, we will announce it on our website. And the chance, I think the chance is uh, there. So uh, maybe starting the next fiscal year, I hope, because, uh, uh, you know, uh, especially young people, younger generation, people in younger generation, whether they are science people or non-science people, you know, it doesn't really matter, you know. So all the people uh, who are maybe interested in Japan uh, should come to Japan. So we are trying. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Gawain, sir. Okay, I think Mr. Ashok, you are there. You want to ask some question? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Konnichiwa, thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. It's really thank useful you. to all our students. Many of our students have attending the session today. And uh, as I told you last year, we got one of our uh, Sakura Science programs approved for 2020 in mm -hmm. August, but due to mm -hmm. Corona, we were not able to travel. And right. uh, last week, we got an opportunity for, you know, using the same application, right? The same plan, and we just applied. Yeah. Uh, we are just keeping our fingers crossed uh, whether we will be able to go because Corona, the application is no problem, but uh, mm. COVID-19 is a problem. So yes. I will contact you separately uh, yeah, to keep yeah. following up on that. I just wanted to tell you that, you know, we are going this year also. Thank you. Okay. You and know, Shweta is... is also there in this uh, meeting. Oh, yes. So, uh, you know, uh, we are trying, we, we decided to uh, uh, postpone. You know, once you are uh, awarded this program, so, and they cannot implement this within this fiscal year, uh, can and do it in, in the next fiscal year. Uh, and then I think uh, in India, uh, okay. vaccine is now very widely available. And in Japan, we'll start uh, this uh, vaccination quite soon. So I hope uh, we can uh, somehow... Uh, Thank so, you. And I hope please, please... Uh, Right. I will contact you again, Nishikawa san separately. Right, because the right. uh, application, we have done it. We are waiting for uh, only Corona. <laughs> COVID yeah. is problem to <laughs> right. solve. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank and you so I much. I want to invite as many people as possible, Thank actually. Yeah. I would request all the participants to be there till the end. We will have a group photo at the end of the session. So I will take up another question. Uh, this is from uh, one of our YouTube viewers. Mm -hmm. Same Pal Singh, he asked that what are the programs for uh, students belonging to uh, studying artificial in intelligence and machine learning? So mm -hmm. how and when to apply for these uh, programs and can the students from science, technology, engineering and mathematics can apply? 
yes yes uh, in machine learning and artificial intelligence yes all all the uh, you know people who are engaged in science and technology and then uh, of course uh, medicine and also even agricultural science is also uh, included in this program and so uh, uh, ai is also artificial intelligence also uh, the very important field of study. so well, the, the, but whatever the most important thing is you must have the partner so uh, you find the, the university maybe uh, who is uh, good at uh, this artificial intelligence study or research field and then uh, <coughs> contact them and then have a establish a very good relation uh, with with those uh, potential host host organization in Japan and then uh, let them request uh, uh, let them uh, apply for this program. So first, you know, before applying for this, uh, you have to have a good relation with uh, Japan in, uh, host organizations in Japan. And suddenly you just uh, come and knock at the door and then uh, he, he doesn't know. Uh, then it, it's not, it may be very, very difficult to, to invite. So start gradually, you know, uh, maybe takes at least one year if you have no, no contact in Japan. So maybe it takes one year because I, I'm sure this program will continue. So uh, we hope you uh, start coming as soon as possible. But, but important thing, this host organization. Uh, so some effort is needed by, by the sending side. Okay. Okay, I hope this answers the question. So the next question is by uh, Sunil, who is a YouTube viewer. And he asks, how can rural students apply in this program? From yeah. rural areas, how can they apply? Yeah, it doesn't uh, matter whether it is rural or uh, you know, uh, it doesn't matter because. Uh, but of course, you have to belong to some organization that is a school or, or a research institute or a company or some kind of uh, organization. You have to be there. So, uh, if maybe you are you are school student, your school can tie up with Japanese host schools. So uh, this, uh, you know. Uh, all Japanese, I'm sure all the Japanese schools, they have our university, they have a website. Uh, so you try to uh, look for the website and then uh, find the contact person. Maybe you may not be able to uh, establish good relation uh, in a short time, but uh, some effort is needed to get to know each other. And then uh, if they find that uh, it is use useful to, to invite them, I'm sure they, because now, uh, many of the Japanese, uh, even high school and then uh, universities, they want to uh, globalize their, their organization. And in order to globalize, the best, easiest, fastest way is to have more foreigners. So uh, Japanese uh, universities uh, try to increase the foreign students <coughs> as, as much as possible. So uh, this is, uh, I think, a very good timing to, to find the right partner uh, in Japan. Okay, so the next question is by Mr. Mohan, Mohammed Zaman. He says he is a B.Tech student in mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. And uh, how can he apply or participate in this program? Mr. Z Zaman, are you there? This question, I think, is not clear. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I can get the, you know, uh, the, his uh, question. <coughs> that okay. means, uh, it, it is almost the same, you know, uh, uh, he's a student and each individual cannot uh, apply. So uh, he first, first talk to his professor, you know, or his supervisor. In, in, or maybe some, uh, in, in each uh, uh, university or institute, they have an international relations officer. So <laughs> they can talk, uh, you can talk to, to them and then uh, find, try to start finding uh, this uh, partner, potential partner in, in Japan. So, of course, you have to find the best partner, of course. That is most important. You know, most suitable partner, uh, uh, you know, it de depends on the uh, nature of, of interest, of, of, uh, inter what kind of interest you have. You know? so if you're interested in uh, mechanical engineering, then you have to find the university which is good at uh, mechanical engineering, right? Okay, so the next question. Okay, you are here. So the next question is by uh, Sunil. He asks, 
are there any research grants for indian professors to conduct research at, at japanese institutes then please let us know ah uh, yeah I, I, that means uh, doing the joint research or he, or he or she just won't come to japan to do the research or joint research together with japanese researchers uh, uh. Yes, sir. It's a joint. It's a joint research. Hmm. So, for so, that to uh, uh, happen, uh, are there hmm. any opportunities or grants that we can apply and then uh, uh, get the process done? Yes. No, no, no. We have a, a JST and BST <coughs> Department of Science Technology. As I already uh, introduced, you know there are uh, some uh, joint research programs already going on, and also JSPS. Together with DST, they have many small sites and joint research programs every year. So uh, uh, you check up on the uh, website of DST, Department of Science and Technology. Uh, they also also call for uh, for the proposal for joint research with Japan. And that is uh, with JST or, or with JSPS. <laughs> so uh, mm -hmm. for Japanese uh, research, uh, I mean funding agency DST. Is one of the biggest party uh, uh, counterpart. So uh, and also I, I in, at the front I just mentioned the, the name of AMED. <coughs> AMED is uh, specializing in medicine, medical science. So uh, in case of medicine, medical science, specialized medical science, uh, maybe uh, they can uh, uh, try to contact AMED. A A M E D. <coughs> so. Uh, this is especially uh, agents. Uh, this is also huge, uh, huge. Uh, they have huge fund for this uh, medical research program. And uh, also including international program. But uh, uh, for the ordinary uh, uh, other programs, and then the difference is between JST, JST and AIM, I don't know, JSPS. <laughs> there are difference between JSPS and JST. JST, we call it top down style of joint research. That means Japanese government decide what kind of study, what kind of field they do the conduct the research. So uh, based on the Japanese government policy, JST will provide, uh, uh, implement such program. In, but in case of a JSPS, they call it, they call it a bottom-up style. That is a professor to professors. Each professor has their own interest of study. And then uh, they will uh, join hand and then make a, uh, application to JSPS. So uh, size of the program, each program may be, may be a bit smaller, but uh, uh, more maybe more, more flexible. And then a uh, number of joint research is uh, many more. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sensei. Yeah. Okay. So uh, is Dr. Deepti Shukla, do you want to ask your question? Yes. My question is, uh, I want to join in the postdoctoral research program in Japan. So what is the mm -hmm. procedure? For the joining the postdoctoral research program in the Japan, yeah, uh, that is. Or what uh, are the uh, website and the details? Okay. Yeah, I uh, you know uh, JSPS postdoctoral fellowship is the best way. Uh, so uh, first uh, you uh, search for this, and at the same time <coughs> you also uh, look for the uh, the uh, professors uh, uh, who have the same interest. Uh, in your in your interest of, of study research, and then you directly contact <coughs> the Japanese uh, professors in Japanese research organization or Japanese university, and then you can start uh, uh, <coughs> talking because each university they have uh, their own uh, postdoctoral uh, uh, programs. So uh, first, you know, there are two ways. One is a JSPS program, and then there are. The other is uh, you can contact the directory uh, to, to each university. And so, my one, the, the, sorry. Mm, oh, yeah, please. And one, my, one, one more question is that mm. MS in case of the artificial intelligence, how the students, they can apply for the computer science or the artificial intelligence for the MS program? Ah, MS for the masters. Program. Yeah, MS also in, you know, in the uh, graduate school, <laughs> Uh, from uh, from uh, for the foreign students, uh, first you must find the professor in Japan. That uh, you know, uh, of course, you must study uh, the uh, the website of each university, Japanese university, and you must find the one uh, at least one professor 
with whom you want to uh, do the research. <coughs> so, because the Japanese uh, graduate school is basically a research oriented style. So you have to have a research subject, <coughs> you know? So you, you speak to the professor directly. And then uh, if uh, the professor in Japan uh, uh, get interested, then uh, maybe he start talking and then uh, uh, maybe able to invite. <coughs> so uh, first you have to find this uh, professor in, in Japan. Thank you so much, Ishikawa. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, so the next question is by uh, Muhammad Salim R. Are you there? Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, sorry. Ahead. One more thing. One more thing. Uh, in any case, uh, for the uh, graduate school, <coughs> uh, mixed scholarship uh, is also very useful. So, also, as I just uh, mentioned, you always uh, keep watch uh, the website of Jap Japanese embassy in India. <laughs> they will, uh, every year they will announce a scholarship uh, program for undergraduate and uh, postgraduate. So, uh, and this is uh, uh, very, it's, if you are uh, granted, awarded this grant, uh, it is going to be very helpful for you. Yeah. Okay, I would like to let the participant know that uh, this uh, lecture will be available online even after the talk on uh, the YouTube channel of Inyas. If so, if anybody wants to see it later, if somebody has missed some, the, some parts of it, uh, you can see it later on also. So, Mr. Mohammed Salim, uh, please go ahead with your question. Yeah. Um, I'm the, I attend the Sakura Science Program at 2016. Now, uh -huh. I am currently doing research in Anna University. So, is there University? any program? In Anna Anna. University, Chennai. Ah, Anna. Okay, okay. Ah. Hi, is there any program like Sakura Science program like a, for research exchange from India to Japan? Uh, I am not quite sure, <coughs> but uh, you know, some Japanese universities they have a, a MOU with Indian Research Institute or Indian universities. So, uh, uh, there are some exchange programs uh, uh, of each university uh, in Japan and uh, so I'm sure Anna University have uh, some MOUs with some Japanese university. So <laughs> you can first look for a uh, possibility there. I'm sure you can find some because Anna University is very uh, well known in Japan. Yeah, thank you, sir. Mm. Okay. So Nishikawa, do you have time? Because we are we are having a pile up of questions. So, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe uh, can we take a few more? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, so so somebody has asked Limayna Kichu. Sorry if I pronounce the name wrong. Do, uh, are you there? If you want to ask a question. Okay. Anyway, so he has asked. Can I apply for PhD in computational mathematics? Oh yes, of course. <laughs> uh, you, you have you can apply, but not to, to GST. You know, you have to apply to the. Uh, no, uh, what do you mean? Uh, the, in, in the by by Sakura Science Plan, you mean? Uh, I don't think he just he just asked yeah, he, for PhD the, in computational uh, mathematics. Yeah, he want to do the PhD. Uh, PhD. Course in Japan, <clears throat> there are yes. uh, some universities who are very, which are very uh, good at uh, uh, this uh, subject. So uh, you can directly contact the, the professors <coughs> of the same uh, research field. So uh, in the in the in the graduate school, as I just mentioned, you know, uh, you must first contact and uh, talk, speak with the professors in in Japan. Right, professor, you know, must find. So in that case, maybe uh, your own professor in your own universities, maybe he or she uh, may know some, they may have some contact with Japanese universities. So maybe you can start with there. Okay. okay. So I'll take a few more questions from mm. YouTube, our participants from there. Uh, Shivam Panchal has asked, what are the programs for PhD in the field of biological and biomedical sciences? Actually, sir, there, there are so many questions related to PhD. <laughs> How can yeah, they, yeah. they apply for PhD? Yeah. It's also, <clears throat> depending on each university, it's also all different. <clears throat> so 
Uh, they also each university, Japanese university, at least you know, top university, they have all very good uh, description on such courses, their own courses, especially in PhD or uh, graduate schools. So uh, in Japan, uh, Japanese university uh, are willing to accept good students uh, in, in researchers in, in the graduate schools. And also uh, very likely in, in many of the top universities, you can do the research by using English only. In, no, not if, even if you don't know Japanese uh, language, you can do. Uh, uh, in the undergraduate courses, uh, it is rather difficult. Of course, there are uh, English medium courses, but uh, in the postgraduate courses, uh, I, I don't know, graduate courses in Japanese uh, top universities, most of them, they, they can do the research in English. So uh, you don't have to worry. Of course, you, during your stay in Japan, you better learn some Japanese, but uh, uh, it is not a must. So uh, I don't think there is going to be much problem, right? you know, as long as the research is concerned in the graduate school. So since we are short in time, so I will club few questions who are yeah. uh, more or less similar. So these are again related to PhD in Japan. In mm -hmm. uh, Narendra has asked about artificial intelligence, and uh, Professor R. P. Avastri has asked, "Can I apply for PhD in education? In education mm -hmm. science, and how?" Mm -hmm. So mostly related to PhD. I think you have already answered that they have to first find the host university and mm -hmm. look into their curriculum, what they wish to have. So education also. <coughs> uh, I don't know exactly which university has this uh, right course, but uh, in uh, education course of study of education, research in education is also the courses are available in, in Japanese uh, uh, universities. So uh, this also uh, somehow you must uh, look for the, the website in the in such a website, and they have and best I mean, top universities are limited, you know. <clears throat> so maybe you can. Uh, Look for the at least uh, top hundred universities. That maybe that should be enough. So uh, one by one you can study, or maybe you can uh, consult. You consult with your professor or your, your friends, and, or also ne. Uh, very specific questions may not be answered, but. Uh, uh, to ne, uh, we had a uh, uh, Sakura Science uh, India alumni uh, per people. Uh, one person uh, is already in Japan studying uh, uh, in PhD course in Kyoto University, which is uh, one of the best universities in Japan. <coughs> she is appointed as a mentor for the Sakura Science uh, people, you know, especially for Sakura Science people. It's on our website. <coughs> uh, Sakura, you just uh, search for Sakura Science Club website in Japan. There you can find the name of the uh, mentors uh, who have come to Japan after uh, the Sakura Science plan. And so maybe you can ask some general questions. <coughs> uh, so uh, maybe, uh, of course, uh, uh, she cannot answer everything, but uh, maybe it can be of some help to you. So just search for uh, Sakura Science Club website and then you can find mentor uh, her name is uh, uh, Posali Mukaji uh, she is uh, studying in the PhD PhD course in Kyoto University she uh, volunteered to be the uh, mentor for uh, this club Sakura science club okay so the next question is by Devank he asks are there any internship opportunities in research for uh, pre final year student I think he's I think he's talking about Postgraduate students who are in the final year. So he asked whether there are any internship opportunities in research yes. in Japan. Internship is available, uh, and it, it will be provided by each university. Or if you want to do the internship with, with the university in Japan, or sometimes some some uh, Japanese uh, companies, yeah. usually both ways. But you can uh, each university or each uh, company. Uh, I am know uh, many companies and the many universities in Japan. They have fellowship, I mean, internship program. But uh, uh, I, I, as far as generally speak, not too many people are. Many, so many people are accepted. Very few people. Only selected people are accepted for for internship in, in Japan. So uh, competition may be very tough. But uh, uh, 
uh, each program, each university has their own program. And also each company, some companies, manufacturers or some companies, they have their own internship program. And then the number of such opportunity is increasing every year <coughs> because uh, Japanese companies also uh, started become aware that uh, in getting a good uh, uh, people, you know, you have to have provide the internship opportunity. Like a, like a US company, like a Google and then Microsoft, they do this internship program and then they find the best people and then they pick up. You know? So a Japanese company now uh, become very much aware of such opportunity. So gradually the opportunity is increasing. So please look for such opportunity uh, and grab it uh, by, by the website. Okay, so Shweta Sundar Rajan, are you there? Shweta? Yeah, oh, she's there. She's here. Yeah, no, please go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering if if there is any possibility of uh, undergraduate students like me getting involved in programs like uh, the SAT, RETS, which we just introduced uh, in the beginning of this session. I cannot get the, the, the question clearly. Can you repeat but, that? Uh, is there any possibility, is there any opportunity for undergraduate students like me to get mm -hmm. involved in uh, programs like uh, AXIS and SAT, REPS? Which... Ah, I see, I see. <clears throat> and only for the undergraduate student, uh, not much chance for, for JST program like uh, AXIS and uh, other program. Uh, because this is a, a, a very a selected, a selected program, and also a volume of the uh, grant is very huge. So only the top researchers can get uh, this uh, program. But uh, <clears throat> if you are, uh, if you go to the graduate schools, graduate courses, and uh, maybe your professor uh, can get such uh, opportunity, such a grant from JST or some uh, JSPS and so on, then you can work with uh, your professor. But uh, students uh, cannot apply for such, because this is a, a national project, you know. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Okay, so there is another question uh, by Sain Pal Singh. He, are, he says that he is promoting Japan education in India and exchange programs. He attended three months climate change program with NICE NPO. So he asked, can he join as a promoter of Sakura science in India as an educator? Uh, uh -uh. So he visited Japan by this program? Yes. Now, by Sakura? With NICE NPO. I don't know about this program, but he just named it here. Uh, <coughs> actually, Promoter of Sakura uh, in India. He can work as an educator. He just asked this program. I think this is a general question. You know, I, of course, uh, anybody can support this Sakura program, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, how to do it is maybe not sure. So if it's, uh, uh, maybe you can ask, send me an email. So then I can ask, you know, I can uh, reply maybe. <coughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, my email ID I can give you know why just here in it, yuji dot nishikawa uh, at jst dot go dot jp. <coughs> so uh, if uh, he's interested, uh, maybe he can. But I uh, know uh, Sakura program itself is a very limited program, <coughs> so uh, uh, not not easily any anybody can uh, really join because it's a selected selected it has to be selected by. Uh, many people and like a research, I mean, receiving party or sending party. Not anybody can just join. Okay. Okay. So the next question is by Sri Ram. He says that he visited Japan via the Sakura Science Program in 2019. Oh. As a, and uh, due to Corona pandemic, the prefectural scholarship was cancelled. So he mm. would like to know whether uh, the scholarship will start again. Uh, usually yes, after the, scholarship. Okay. Yeah, usually as soon as the COVID-19 uh, uh, stop or uh, subside, and then uh, ordinary uh, annual program or scholarship program or fellowship program will restart, I'm sure. 
So uh, you, uh, he, he has to uh, keep in touch with the uh, uh, provider of this uh, grant or, or fellowship always, you know? and always uh, uh, ask him for, for when it will be recovered or so. so it, news maybe can uh, be released uh, anytime, but uh, not, not soon, maybe in, in several months later, I'm sure. Hmm. Okay, Nishikawa, please uh, tell me when to stop because there are few more questions. I think three or four. Yeah, maybe more we can uh, uh, at the, for today. Maybe we can stop, and maybe in future, okay. maybe we can do it again. Okay, so I would, I would like to stop here because uh, he has a busy schedule. So I may ask everybody to just switch on their cameras just to have one photograph. If I may ask all to have the camera switched on as many maybe we can have one or two sessions so, okay okay thank you so much so so ready okay thank you so much to yeah. all um so uh, there is a, a vote of thanks that was to be given by Dr. Pankaj, but he could not be there because of some emergency in his family. So on behalf of Indian National Young Academy of Science, I thank Mr. Nishikawa from JST for taking out time to deliver this talk and also for taking up questions so generously. Thank you, Nishikawa-san. And I, I also thank Dr. Pankaj for help in organizing today's talk. And all the coordinators of Sakura Science Club who are present here, I thank you all for popularizing this talk. Thank you, Madhvi and Aditya, for helping with Zoom and YouTube platforms. I thank all the participants who have logged in today. It's a Saturday, so uh, thank you very much for joining on, in on a holiday. I hope you must have been benefited by the talk today, and it will be helpful to you in case you have um, any questions or uh, you know now where to contact. And I hope this will help you pursue your studies in science and technology in Japan in future. I hope as, this, as soon as the pandemic gets over. And finally, on my personal behalf and on behalf of INIAS, I thank both uh, JST and in the Sakura Science Club India for joining with INIAS in hosting this webinar series. I hope to see that we will have more of such events in future. And again, I thank you all for being here and have a nice day. Thank you. Okay, so bye everybody. Bye. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. Bye.